we're going to take a look at um, basically how to add and subtract fractions. Uh, you have to have the same denominator. So if you notice there, we have the same denominator of 4, and that frees us up to basically be able to subtract the top. So 9 minus 6 would be 3, and the bottom stays exactly the same. So um, it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure that the fractions have the exact same denominator. If we're adding uh, or subtracting mixed numbers, it's going to be very, very similar. So let's set this one up, 1 and 2 thirds plus 1 and 1 third. Let's go ahead and just add the whole numbers. 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we take a look at the fractions. We see they have the same denominator. And so let's go back and add the numerator, the top numbers. 2 plus 1 is 3. And again, if you notice, um, we just keep the same denominator. Now what's 3 over 3? That's the same as 1. So that'd be as if we were saying, what's 2 plus 1? And to simplify it, it would become 3. So, you know, that happens occasionally. But the main thing is, is, hey, you have to have the common denominator to add or subtract fractions. Now, if they don't have the common denominator, we're going to have to do a little bit of work. Um, I noticed that, you know, left fraction has a 7 for the denominator, and the right one's got a 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that right denominator, the 4, and multiply the left fraction by it. And I get 16 over 28. And now I'm going to take the denominator on the left fraction, the 7, and multiply the right side by that 7, top and bottom. And I'll get 21 over 28. And now I have common denominators. So at this point, I just add my numerator. 16 and 21 is 37, and we keep the denominator. Well, slight issue here. You can't have the top number uh, larger than the bottom number. So how many times does 28 go into 37? It goes in once. How many is left over? 9. Keep the same denominator. There's your answer. We can't simplify it anymore. Let's take a look at subtraction. You know, I like to set these up vertically usually when I'm doing subtraction. It just makes it a lot easier. But, um, you know, before we go and subtract um, the front numbers, uh, go ahead and pay attention to your fractions there. And the first thing that I notice is that we don't have common denominators. Now, if I want, uh, I can multiply uh, each fraction by each denominator, and we'd get a common denominator of 12. But uh, I notice that I can just multiply that 1 half by a 3, and that would get me the 6 for the denominator. And so then I wouldn't have to be doing so much work. So this becomes 3 and 3 sixths minus 2 and 1 sixth. So we've done all that work just to get the common denominators. So let's go ahead and subtract our uh, whole numbers. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Now keep the same denominator. Remember, you've got to simplify those fractions. So those 2 sixths does simplify down to 1 third. This is a situation that we will focus on more tomorrow than we will today. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes you're going to have to borrow. We, we've got no fraction for that top number. So let's look at it this way. We're going to take 1 away from the 10, and that leaves 9 in its place. And that 1, well, we could set that 1 right there in the fraction column. How can we rewrite that 1 as though it had a denominator of 3? Because that's what that bottom fraction has, a denominator of 3. Well, from previous lessons, we knew that we could write 1 as like 1 over 1 or 2 over 2, or in this case, we could use 3 over 3. That makes it really convenient because that gives us a common denominator. So, uh, and again, 2 over 2 equals 1, 6 over 6 equals 1, 100 over 100 equals 1. You can, as long as that top number is the same as the bottom number in that fraction, it's 1. So let's go ahead and, and get ready for the math here. We chose uh, 3 over 3 because our bottom fraction, the 1 third, had um, a 3 for the denominator, and so now we're all set up. You know, it's not too bad. We just borrowed 1 from the 10, made it a 9, and that uh, 1 became a 3 over 3. So 9 minus 7 is 2, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Good news, it's already simplified. Now, um, there are other times where we have to borrow, and it's a little bit different. 
and sometimes you don't see it right away. Now, this time we have two fractions, but they don't have common denominators. Um, before I jump straight into it and, and try to, you know, multiply these two uh, denominators against the other fractions and get 27 the common denominators, I see, ooh, I can make this top one into 9 for the common denominator. So um, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So there we go. There's our new fraction with common denominators. But um, 3 minus 5 isn't going to work. So I'm going to borrow. I'm going to take away 1. And that means we're going to have 8 there. And, and it's the same as if saying, hey, 3 ninths plus the 1 that we borrowed. Well, what's the common denominator? Well, it's a 9. So I'm going to take that 1 and make it into 9 over 9 because that's still the 1. Right? Okay. So so it's it's like we're trying to add them in because we're having to borrow and we're kind of having to merge them into this. So 3 plus 9 is 12, and we keep that common denominator. And now we're finally in a good setup. This 8's brought over, and now we can say, hey, 8 and 12 ninths minus 2 and 5 ninths. So 8 minus 2 is 6, and 12 minus 5 is 7. Keep the same denominator, 9. Can't simplify it? There's your final answer. Well, that's pretty much everything. I mean, if, if you can get by with this borrowing uh, parts on here, you'll you'll be okay. Will you have questions? Absolutely. Watch the video again. Raise your hand. Ask a, uh, a classmate. Ask me while you're working on this stuff. But uh, best of luck. Uh, this is not necessarily new stuff. This is what you've been doing since about fifth, sixth grade. So uh, we'll get you through it. The only tough part is, is you've got to do some multiplication without a calculator.